Let's just do this. We got so much Yo, to we cover. We gotta go, man. We, we gotta, gotta go. go. I've been live 19 and a half hours. Last six and a half of it was watching them present incredible amounts of information. This is broken into three parts from them, which was not in the order they said they would do them. The PVE, the battle system, and the job changes. So first we did all of the upcoming job changes. As the live stream started, since we're starting at the beginning, we saw the title screen of Endwalker and data center visit was on there. But just to get out in front of that, I can tell you TLDR, data center or visit will not be here on launch of 6.0. So um, this will be the job changes to the battle jobs, Disciple of Hand and Land, while they touched on a couple of things in the, oh, in the system changes later in, in future segments, um, will be in the live letter uh, on November 5th, the, the last live letter before Endwalker, uh, with a media tour um, that they said would be the embargo would be released in mid-October and that there would be lots of, I'm using exact quotes here, because this is, this is the most insight we've had. Uh, there will be lots of Western influencers that he looks forward to talking MMO shop with. That's what we got. Um, and then they will also be talking about PVP during that second live letter. Remember, everything we are talking about right now is still development. Some of these have ongoing things. And so the job adjustments here are um, all a work in progress, even the media tour version. Uh, last time when we got invited to the Shadowbringers media tour, we were playing an early build um, and there were still things changing, still moving parts. So the first thing was general guidelines. Yeah. Um, rather than kind of break every single job down, full tool tips, they said, let's, let's just talk about what our design philosophies were. We don't have to stick to them every time, but where are we headed? Um, this is going to build on 5.0. So, uh, rather than trying to go back to some previous system or start something new, they really like where we're at in Shadowbringers. Uh, we will be of course adding new actions and things like that but we're not looking to do brand new systems and overhauls for the entire battle system a couple of jobs got some pretty drastic changes but um as a whole they're looking for this to be the next iteration of uh thinking that shadowbringers has gone pretty well i don't think they're alone in thinking that shadowbringers has been pretty well received um and so one of the big changes is the primary abilities the mm -hmm. recast times getting to um, this 60 second 120 second there are exceptions. There are exceptions to this rule, but generally, <laughs> and then they already showed ex exceptions like, and then this is 55 seconds. I know, yep. Yep. Um, but it's like 60 seconds, 120 seconds. So you might see things and skills that are like 180 seconds right now drop into that 120 second, uh, you know, gap essentially. And this also accompanies like the entire theme of what we see here. So, yeah. The goal there was to make sure that when you're changing job to job, that there is a general game tempo that feels about right. It should also help groups act very cohesively, um, but not everything's going to line up and definitely not all abilities. This is It's meant to be what's driving primary abilities. And so anything else, it might have to just adjust so that it fits right within a rotation. Uh, and Yoshi P said that unfortunately, even as director and producer, his, his main job, Black Mage, does not line up that well. So uh, that was his first example there. We now watch the job action trailer. This was the longest job action trailer we've had. This thing was like 15 minutes. It is posted over to YouTube if you want to watch it there. It is phenomenal. Um, you get to see some beautiful animations and once we get, and then we went over these things line by line and then they went, played it again. And it's like, okay, some of these things are making more sense now. So they started with tanks. Um, the big overcoming overall charge, uh, charges going to tanks here. We are saying that defensive cooldowns used at optimal times will grant bigger benefits, whether you're a main tank or off tank ranged attacks will no longer break combos. There also yes. is another one here that is not listed. All gap closers will be at 20 yards, not just the warrior anymore. They ended up listing that individually as a paladin, dark knight, and gunbreaker thing. I'll just put it here. Uh, and then this last segment, this last segment applies to every single role. So listen up, even if you're not a tank and you don't ever want to be one. There is two ways of balancing things ever since A Realm Reborn was made. There is a coefficient by which um, effectively magic damage is done. And then there's one for physical. And they left that in place because they weren't sure if they'd need it when they rolled into ARR. And over the years, those have gotten out of alignment. With Shadowbringers, physical's way less. And he did this little cat paw thing, so I'm going to do it too. And he said that we are now going to bring melee up to, right, up to, uh, up to our magic. And that means to keep the physical from being outrageously powerful, the potencies on all physical abilities need to come down so that they can remain the same strength. So when we come uh, into 
you know, this potential kind of media tour season where you start to see actual tooltips or people start translating the tooltips that he moused over there. Um, potencies for physical things will have gone down well beyond what the stat squish does. And just be aware of that. It's 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 fine. Um, it's going to be OK. So that's that's a big one. Uh, Paladin was up first. Yeah, that so Paladin looks sweet. Yes. So Paladin, uh, from the changes that they've they brought in, requisite is now going to be equally effective regardless of your remaining MP. So that's not going to necessarily impact your rotation. I think that's honestly a strong uh, move there. A three attack combo starting with Confeder is going to be added, and I'm really excited to see that change uh, for the Paladin itself. Looked they like also, it was Requiescat, Confidior, Holy, and then a new Ender. Yeah. Lots of new combo Enders, just as a general rule. And also, just so you know, for those who are listening or watching along with this, the examples that we're showing up right now in the video version of this are just some of the examples. Like Chris said at the beginning, the Media Tour is going to allow uh, apparently Western content creators. I went for Among that. others. Among <laughs> others. That's we, quote. Uh, yeah, like we're, I'm quoting OGP. Uh, be able to sit here and dive more into the nitty gritty about what exactly has changed between the job, et cetera. So we're highlighting again what they're showing. All right. I just want to make sure that was very clear at the start. <laughs> All right. Uh, so that was basically uh, after that, after that Requiesce Cat and, and Magical combo, there was some big swords crashing down. So Paladin looks like it's it's going to be even better, especially as we start to adjust things to standard windows. I think Paladin is one of the jobs where I look forward to seeing if the tooltips get away from these weird numbers. Um, so let's move on to Warrior. Yes, Let's keep this moving. So Warrior, uh, Warrior got some slight changes, but changes slight you wanted, changes, um, mostly changes I wanted. So uh, damage up effects. Your Storm's Eye can now be triggered by AOE combos, not just extended by AOE combos. Um, upheaval and onslaught will no longer drain Beast Gauge. I actually said I did not. I explicitly did not want. Uh, my gap closer to remove beast gauge because it homogenizes it. So that's the one I didn't like because under under inner release it's free anyways. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But your onslaught will gain three charges now, which I specifically did want. Um, so that means, and they said, so you can be very mobile. I'm not going to be very mobile. I'm going to inner release and slam the crap out of something for that extra potency. Uh, and then inner release is dropping from 90 seconds down to 60 seconds. Now we are no longer, they showed it off and we only saw three fell cleaves in there if I counted correctly, but then there was this new ender to the fell cleave. Um, so it looks like it's, it's a, it's shorter. It's more often. That's just a general trend. Uh, a nation flash they said is now going to help more when you're an off tank, but they didn't really elaborate on that. Nation yeah. flash is already incredibly powerful. So, um, I guess nation flash gets better. Uh, and then dark Knight. um, your salted earth macro you can get that macro slot yeah, back salted earth that is macro. Now going to center on you it will center on you and make a new action available uh simulcrum your 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 buddy buddy is now going to gain new actions when you acquire new actions so it was a lot more close of a mirror there and then delirium has gone down to 60 seconds from 90. keep in mind that all the non-warrior tanks gap closers have extended to that 20 yards just to state that once again and then there is a separate defensive like the blackest knight that they cast on the lovely white mage standing there idly in the job action trailer next to him. Um, Gunbreaker, weren't you stoked for the Gunbreaker change? Oh, absolutely. So uh, for those who don't know, Savage Claw and Wicked Talon are now going to swap in for Gnashing Fang on the hot bar so that uh, you're, the three actions that you're doing are now a, basically a stacked action. As you use them, you're not going to have to have three separate spots, spots, spots just for those. Uh, it's like three in the morning when we're recording this, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's actually thrilling because that's going to save so much space. That's going to solve the macro that I actually put in place just to save me some space and continuation still going to be that, that function, but it now can also continuate off of other skills as well. So following first, first strike. strike, I was that like non gnashing thing combo. Yes. So I was like, that's going to be so good. Uh, also, if you guys can see from the, the trailer of the skills, you're good. We're going to have up to three cartridges via a trait that's going to be added to the gunbreaker giving you more and we also even saw a skill that actually used two cartridges so i thought that was really exciting to see like what what how that plays out your your guess is as good as mine but i think this is going to be a nice button saver from the uh, button breaker known as gunbreaker <laughs> all right and that moves us into melee um so first up 
Roll action, faint. Faint is now also going to reduce from magical damage. It will reduce more from physical. And so Addle is going to be the direct counter to this, where it is now, just to jump you ahead, Addle is now going to resist from both, but more from magical. So uh, faint used to be minus strength, minus dexterity. So there's some speculation around when to use it. It basically becomes counter Addle. Um, and so I think those two will pair really well. Keep in mind, range does not break combos and that physical potencies uh, have been lowered without weakening anybody. Um, that's just going to be a statement on any role here that they're worried about people getting that wrong. And we jump straight into Dragoon. Um, Dragoon had their AOE rotation expanded uh, and they got a new action added upon the completion of the weapon combo rotation. In general, because it's now easier to not break combinations, all that, it seems like this whole expansion is going to be about like, hey, if you, do your, if you do your rotations correctly, we will reward you with a big shiny thing. No need to have a uh, an, an abacus or anything telling you you're doing things right. Uh, Blood of the Dragon is now a trait. That's a big change. That's a big change. Big uh, change. Spider Satter Drive is getting a stackable. You can have two mm -hmm. charges of that ability. And yeah, that's actually the notes that I had when they, they said Blood of the Dragon becoming a trait. I was like, it's no longer an executable skill. I was like, wow, that's a big change. And then they had a couple of charges adjusting to 60 seconds as well. So mm -hmm. it should feel a lot different. But Dragoon changed nothing compared to Monk. Monk you think has this gotten one of the biggest overhauls. Is this change bigger than the Grease Lightning change? Yeah, I, I think absolutely. Big. Well, especially because, okay, so Chakras, they said that's going to be added in at an earlier level. Uh, Mr. Happy, I think, made a video you said a couple of months. Video's already out. Yeah, a month ago or two months ago. <laughs> talking about, yes, we wanted to see the Chakras brought in earlier. Uh, but also, when conditions are fulfilled, Perfect Balance will now allow for the execution of a Masterful Blitz. This is available. Blitz is changing depending on the weapon skills used when under the effect. It almost was kind of like an Astrologian's card symbols mm -hmm. in which that as you use in your forms, it builds this up and then you end up executing another ability. They've also removed shoulder tackle. Uh, so, but they have still a gap closer that lets you jump to a party member or jump to a target. So that is, I think, a, another big change overall added to this. Now, Perfect Balance uh, can now have two charges and dropped from 90 seconds to a 40 second cooldown. Wow. And the things that go off under Perfect Balance are what determines what your Masterful Blitz does. And so you're triggering this kind of series of like the ask, the way the Astro thing works right now. And that will determine if you have these yin or yang elemental things available for you at the end. So there's this weird kind of partial mudra, partial astrologian kind of, and it's, and it's often. Um, so it looked fast, fast, fast. At this point, one of the things we took note of, because this was one of the first times they showed us game footage, is um, things had a lot less life. Like my mm -hmm. Paladin, we saw that later. My Paladin uh, has 190,000 life in game right now. I'm in like 525 gear. And uh, their Paladin had 47,000 life. So we'll talk about stats, but just like when you're watching any of this, um, keep in mind the, the damage squish, uh, you know, the stat squish here is very, very real. Uh, Samurai. Samurai is pure DPS. Uh, pure DBS is going to stay that way. They made it easier to be more of a samurai. So they they literally are saying, hey, let's let's make things pliable by AOE combos. Mm -hmm. Let's make new actions available on top of things. Uh, let's make it easier to keep your windows up. Let's just make you samurai more samurai. Um, so they're building upon. <laughs> uh, and that shot us right into Ninja. Yes. So the uh, the actions linked to our existing ones there and then making it easier to keep Hutan up uh, as well as your Shadow Fang is gone. No more dot. Uh, it's just gone. And so they've they've added some actions to to Boonshin. I don't I don't know Ninja well enough to know what you guys wanted changed about it. Um, I've been leveling it. I'm having a blast on it. I've enjoyed the pacing of Ninja. I enjoyed it right from when it started as Rogue. So uh, if they are making more actions on top of this, that sounds better to me. Um, I don't know if anybody really wanted changes to some of these jobs. And then Reaper, obviously, all new information. All new. So Reaper, obviously, using the scythe and essentially attack in tandem with their avatar. And it can serve as the avatar's vessel to unleash even more powerful attacks. That has the ability to actually grant enhancements to the party as well. So a little bit of utility. But they said that it is still that kind of pure damage dealer. Like maybe one step removed from Samurai. So Samurai no utility you want to play a utility based samurai reaper is probably going to be your choice in this regards uh unique for specialized actions is going to give them the edge in specific combat situations and the gameplay for this looks freaking phenomenal like the actions and yep. traits they look amazing. yeah 
you got two bars. Basically, you got a um, you got a, a soul gauge as your uh, your top gauge there. That's going to fill with the actions you do as you charge those attacks and use them. That's going to um, allow you to unleash attacks with your avatar, uh, which is the bottom gauge. And you're going to your or when you deplete that, that's going to deplete by using your avatar, which your little your little buddy, who I think I think you might be his buddy. Uh, and once you unleash all of those, you guys are going to merge and start using the shroud gauge, that blue bar there, uh, and that's going to let you and the avatar merge and become one and, and there's like lala takes on its true form and they said it's going to look different a little different for everybody so i look forward to seeing how that cosmetically looks i'm sure there'll be a handful of reapers on day one uh and then the uh from there you use stronger combos and so it it just keeps leveling up it looked it looked awesome it looked absolutely awesome uh when you're watching the job trailer right there that also takes place at a point in favnar that i would uh favnar that i'd like to say if you look out there there's some islands off of that so you know just they just looked like kind of like really peaceful like maybe like a sanctuary of some kind we didn't get anything but that was the closest we got from this whole thing so it, i just took a note uh and then we would uh they were worried that it was going to be too difficult for the number of people that were interested and they said you know what we just don't think it'll be something to master and something to do uh there's no positionals until you are with the avatar and if you want to know what its lb3 looks like go back and look at the last uh at, at xenos in the uh in the benchmark was mm -hmm. what they said um, if we didn't mention would... the positional removal monk is also having two of its forms having yeah. positional being removed as well so that ultimately that's going to give you a lot of flexibility and mom, uh, movement. What, what I gathered from a lot of this is they there's said it was a lot too of, fast to leave it positional, right? It was, you're just moving around too fast is it, that it's not, it doesn't make sense at that point. So it's like, all right, well, there you go. It uh, had a, now Reaper had a lot of buttons. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Like a lot of buttons. Yeah. Um, a lot of buttons that it looked like you were using. <laughs> like it wasn't even just like occasional buttons. It was like uh, they're pushing a lot of stuff here. So we were in a physical range. Um, we started now, they said that, uh, physical range, they actually used the term, these got orthodox upgrades. So they, they kind of considered this just, just more of the same. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then once again, just a reminder, the, anything physical potency did get, did get nerfed there. You're barred. This Looks was surprised <laughs> uh, like from the image they show out of all of them the bar looks bard is just happy to huh? still be included in endwalker here uh oh my gosh they were I, you didn't say you were ready to take the picture so bard there on the left is up first and we have three songs and each one will make new actions that are going to allow for party-wide buffs there's going to be a new action after apex area arrow and uh we'll move on to machinist that was yeah. it no, that, right. was, that was what you got they said bard was the one Bard was the one they named explicitly when they said they were still working on finishing things up. Mm -hmm. uh, so there could be more on that one. Machinist got a new mechanical action named Chainsaw. Yeah. And a new action for the robot. Um, and then Reassemble now had two charges. Uh, it's currently at 55 seconds. And so it moving to two charges. I did wonder, does that go up to 60? It's at 55 now. Um, yeah, so we'll have to see. And then now. obviously in the queen, your automation queen is going to get a new action. They show that off looks spectacular honestly at the end of the day when you when we look at the the range dps i think machinist and dancer are in probably the strongest position so i'm curious to see what other adjustments happen with bard but yeah they're like yep machinist we nailed it last time we're just <laughs> it's just evolving a little bit here we're good to go so there's not much to add about the machinist dancer you're yes. excited about dancer yeah, uh, the dancer and the changes they were saying with weapon skills such as flourishing, uh, flourishing cascade can actually now be shared across single target and AOE. I love that aspect. I think that's one of the things that especially when you bring up the concept of tank being able to kind of like, yes, like it helps in dungeons, right? Like when you're doing like the, the raids and you're typically fighting just one thing like, yeah, that, that's where that makes sense. But then you go to dungeons and it's like there is just this discrepancy among some of the some of the jobs. And some jobs didn't even have a problem with it. So to see that happen with Dancer is really thrilling. And the new actions are going to be available upon execution of technical finish, improvisation, and dev, uh, development. or devilment. And one of the things I saw chat saying a lot during that aspect is that they've, they've finally fought, found a use for improvisation. One of the things that when it came down to the job, the things that they were proposing, it seems like people were really excited about improvisation over, you know, I guess your standard finish or your technical finish. Yoshi B seemed pretty happy with the way Dancer was playing. He just said that people's biggest frustration was that it felt like they needed to have two separate hot bars to really use the job effectively sometimes. And yeah. so I think they were really thinking like, how do we how do we just make you keep being a dancer but with less friction? 
Um, but otherwise, they seemed really happy with it. So orthodox upgrades indeed. Uh, then we move on to magical. Yeah, now, that's where that oh, addle yeah. addle is is counter faint now. So those those work that way. Um, and that was that was really it as, as far as affecting the full magical because there is nothing that sums what each of these jobs is doing because they are all changing in a noticeable way. This category changed more than any other. Um, I think healers included. I think magical magical DBS they got new identities for the fact that they are supposed to be kind of building on. They really leveled it up. Yep, that um, they did. Let's start with Black Mage, crowd favorite, Yoshi P's main job, Black Mage. Uh, Enochian, or as we'll always like to say, Enochain from time to time, uh, will become a trait that is automatically applied while either under the effect of Astral Fire or Umbro Ice. Holy crap. Holy <laughs> incredible. <laughs> like, I am just like, I can't wait to see how that feels. I felt like the ch the change they made was fine. Like I, I, but I could see how that having it just off of my like having to worry about it, and it's just now a trait that's going to allow me to focus more on where that's at. So that's that's honestly, I think it, that was a long time coming. Uh, also, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. So they changed the rotation up a fair bit. So they did say things like proc rates, like under fire are going to be longer. Um, there is a UI change. We'll talk about in the later section where now your proc things and the job they showed was black mage. Um, you'll be able to separate that HUD element so that you no longer so have to nice. keep a bar. So these proc rates and the proc rates are longer so that you can weave more things in. Um, while you're in under this action here, uh, when you're using things right, depend on specific conditions, your astral fire and umber ice will trigger new actions. One of which you can you can very clearly see there is ice and fire in that ability. So there is uh, definitely some new stuff. We don't know exactly what we're looking at. Um, Black mage looks looks like it's like oh, it yeah. looks so it looks on great. Point. The it fire and so ice abilities point. and the like everything just it feels so on point. They're still struggling with the naming because they said that there was actually rules within Square Enix to kind of follow what happens when suffixes exceed what the Japanese language authors. And Final Fantasy XIV has gone higher into suffixes than any uh, other Final Fantasy game ever has. So for JP, they're working on new suffixes that wouldn't sound silly. Um, but here in the US, I assume they'll just consider making a confusing numbering system. Uh, new charges will also be added for sharp cast. Um, Red Mage, yes. this whole job, they just said, like, it seems like you just get to enjoy each phase a little bit longer. It looks like they spread it out. So like the 110 second went to 120. It's going to take longer to build your gauges, but it's going to take longer to burn them down. You get a big old shield, like a big old. Yeah. Uh, so you got raise, heal, and shield brought in by the, uh, like the red a huge mage. protect went off. Yeah. It was massive. Um, that was awesome. Defensive party wide. Uh, you're, it's going to move towards lining up with the 60s and 120s magnification going to 120 uh just across the board looked like it was becoming utility heaven and if it weren't for the fact that black mage looks good machinist looks good dancer looks good summoner looks good it was like it's like wow why wouldn't you bring two red mages oh because every other god job looks freaking amazing also summoner this is our third new job of this Hold expansion up. sorry we I, you jumped ahead I, one of the another item from the red mage though yep. ver flare ver holy and scorch also changing oh, yes, aoe's yes, yes. And becoming a part of the AOE rotations for Red Mage, like that is going to be huge, yes. huge. And then yes. we, we talk. You already mentioned like how Black Ma Mana and, and all that's changing, but that that aspect just of the AOEs of those th like those abilities, holy crap! That's exactly what I've been wanting for that job so much. All utility, all the time, all the time. For Holy being AOE is in addition to. Oh, <laughs> right. And now we get into right. the Summoner. Which, okay, guys, we got a new job. Uh, third job introduced today. We actually are getting a summoner in Final Fantasy 14. True summoner. True summoner. Step um, one, throw the dots in the trash. Dots are Number gone. Dots. No dots. Stop no dots. dots. Stop dots. Minus DKP. Uh, you're going to be summoning actual things. Yes. Garuda, Titan, Ifrit. They did a little bit of lore dance around it. Like, we're not actually summoning because we know that's bad. <laughs> We have to slay our own warrior of light now. He's becoming the icon summoner. Um, so you're you're going to basically call down like Arsite, Magisite looking things. It's going to summon them. They're going to cast something. And then all of your spells are going to take on their element. Yeah. And absolutely. their kind of personality. Are they instant casts? Or do you have to stand still? 
Um, looks like two sets were instant, so it's still a very highly mobile job, but one of the three. You can do the three magistrate in whatever order you want. They show them being done in order. And at the end of all three, you get to summon your Phoenix, do that old phase, and do and it all over thing again. Starts over. Um, now, you will be able to resize all of these summons. So they are kind of being aware of that. Resize the way it looks on your client. That's a, I think that'll still be a chat command, which that, that works weird. Mm -hmm. And then there will be Aggie Glams where you'll be able to change your carbuncle into looking like any of its its grown up versions uh, that you want. I don't know if those will be there on launch, but that that's what was stated. Uh, what was noticeable about this is that if you don't count like roll, a roll actions or sprint or anything like that, there were only 20 buttons on the bar. And four of those are these basically stances, which means you're really only pressing like 16 buttons. So it was a really, it's instant cast, it's highly mobile. It's not an overwhelming number of buttons. So it looked really powerful for how simple it was. So I assume it's the choices and things that add the depth, the, the fact that you can do those in whatever order. So you're trying to pair them with the right phase. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So if you've like, this is, I think what well, a lot of people have been wanting just to see like summoner kind of really become uh, something special. What surprised me was the dot removal and, but, oh my gosh, like I freaked out. Like this is something like they're showing it off in action. I think it's something to be really excited about. I feel like Summoner is kind of slotting uh, the difference between Black Mage and Red Mage. Still has its resurrection, even though they said that it, that only survived by the skin of its teeth going into this expansion. So who knows if we if we see that continue on down the road. But uh, at the end of the day, like I, I think this is going to be something where a lot of people who haven't been satisfied with how Summoner plays with the awkward timings of its dots and a couple of handful of like little issues that you that people would have with it. I think this is going to be something really interesting seeing a lot of summoners compete, uh, you know, for that slot in, in your uh, checking out Sage and, and Reaper when the game launches here in November. It got like five minutes of the 15 minute job trailer. So go watch that thing. Uh, it's it's a lot to show. Mm -hmm. um, healer. So we are moving to two different kinds of healers. Yes. Straight up. That is happening. Yeah. The party finder and the duty finder will be adjusted. We'll talk about that in a later section. There will be a two barrier healers and two direct healers. Um, that's that's happening. We are reducing offensive cast times down to one and a half seconds so that you can, I guess, you know, weave offs and off globals and stuff. So that'll feel a lot better. Uh, the limit break got expended for from 30 yams to 50 yams. Um, and there's going to be new actions. So the healers have single target buffs and stuff to each healer so that they can each kind of take on their own personality. White Mage became functionally and visually a distinct restorative field. They got to basically drop like a lily tower on the on the ground. Yeah, a um, nice little healing tower flower thing. They lost their bind. They lost Fluidora. Yeah. Um, the the Divine Venice and their shield action, since they're not a shield healer, that, that's going to be something they only need kind of in, as a pivotal moment, becomes a charge action. Uh, and they stay as a pure healer. They're ready to go. They're good. Why well, uh, right major I felt was like was the job that's going to get at the the least amount of no doubt. attention. Yeah. I'll show you guys how this works. Oh yeah, you, you guys follow. Now let's move into Astro. That's a big difference. Yes. So this is something that we were having this like debate on. We were talking about this. We've been talking about this on the uh, podcasts and on videos. But diurnal sect and nocturnal sect are gone. There is no stance for this. Neutral sect will still be there, you know, at some point in that regards, but they're going to be removed and basic healing actions are going to be adjusted to have the same effects that they would under diurnal sect. So they are a pure healer. That's the healing over time effects as well. The effect of divination is going to be changed and the seals used for new enhancements are actually going to apply to self. So like Chris said, kind of in the opener that we do believe that the, like the seals or, or like divination is going to give everybody that that buff and it's not going to matter about the seals, but the seals are going to impact you. And, uh, and then we also see Arcana minor Arcana with Lord of crown, uh, crowns and lady of crowns being split off into its own UI element, which essentially sounds like they're also getting a, a, a big AOE damage and a big heal, a uh, heal, uh, option as well. Kind of bringing maybe a little bit more in line with what the white mage could do damage wise. Uh, yeah. And then redraw will no longer be a charge action. You will just get one every time you draw. So you can redraw that each time you draw, you, you got, you got one mulligan, move on. Mm -hmm. uh, no need to kind of save that and think about it. It's, it's instant. Move on, move on, move on. Um, let's move to the barrier healers. Yeah. Scholar. This was the one they addressed the least of. They I know. Really this is most I, I had more. This actually left me with questions. Um, 
They said there'll be a uh, unique action. You have basically an in battle Peloton. So you have an in battle thing that's going to allow you to move during combat. They have a very powerful single target buff. And then they just said, and then there's Sage. Yeah. Uh, and so like, I was like, what about what? fairies? What about like, like Summoner got such a massive change. And then they're like, yeah. And Scholar. And then there's Sage. Yeah, so there's like, Sage. I, I don't know. <laughs> there will be Scholars. Uh, Sage is a barrier healer and it can attack and heal at the same time. The way it does this is you're going to have a, a system called Cardia. Um, Cardia is going to basically call like a focus tank. Uh, or focus target, and so you might cardio the, the tank, and then as you attack, it, it will heals. heal that person. It's going to draw upon a different resources for healings, buffs, and damage. So it's got it's got some interesting UI element stuff going on. Um, and then once you designate that person, your like your attack, there's there's like a dot component. You're getting a resource called Gall, which is going to allow you to execute barriers. It's got a gap closer called Icarus. Anybody who doesn't know how Icarus ends means that that sounds like it's gonna really escalate quickly. Um, so it's a lot of laser beams. They were really excited about the sci-fi no noises. Looked fancy, looked broken for deep engine, looked, I mean, I've, I have you no can, idea how Cause you how can cardio yourself. So you can yeah. like, I'm damaged and I'm putting out healing at the same time. Which and then they got it's the shield. Two thousand hit, and so it only has forty thousand life. And so we'll cover this also again when we get to the UI section updates in part two. But just so you know, like in the UI, party finder, etc., there's that split out between a pure healer and a barrier healer. Matchmaking stuff will try to will work to get you a pure and a barrier in your party. So you're not going to be two barriers and or two pure. So that's just going to be how it is. So white mages are probably going to miss their astrologian friends and vice versa. So. <laughs> I would say um the 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 battle changes I think they were getting tired at this point they'd run they were hoping the whole thing could be done in 4 hours and we were three and a half hours in we were just finishing up the first section um so that was the end of part 1 and everything's battle adjustments after this mm -hmm. uh and so they I think the healers probably will get a lot hopefully they'll get a lot more information out of whatever the media tour becomes uh, that they said the embargo would be sometime in the middle of October. Um, I'm hoping that reveals a lot more because I think with healers, I had more questions than answers. Uh, everything else felt like they were very, very thorough. And then they were like, yeah, and oh man, look at the time. There will be healers. Anyway, I'll see you guys <laughs> in 10 minutes. Uh, so that's part one. Uh, so, you know, wave our hands so Brian can maybe timestamp this or something. Here, here's a, what are here's your thoughts? A, here's an easy way. Uh, oh, thoughts on jobs adjustments? Thoughts on jobs adjustments. Leave at the end of this. Summoner is uh, looking crazy awesome. I have been so excited for Summoner uh, and in this regards, because like even you guys have seen me over the course of Storm uh, Shadowbringers disappointed with how Summoner plays. And I've gotten some flack for it, uh, but <laughs> that's just how the, the community works. Like, you know, th there's always going to be somebody's favorite something. And for some people, some, pe some people really like Summoner in, you know, Shadowbringers. And uh, to those people, we're just going to be oil and water. Like, I'm like, I... I really do miss the summoner prior prior, but I was like, I hope this means that we're going to see some big Mr. Happy did the uh, interview with Yoshi, uh, Yoshi P talking about why would we do ugly um, work on the eggy glamor system, implying something bigger was coming for summoners. And thank goodness that my hopes were fulfilled. I was like, well, maybe this is an opportunity for summoner to become like something like it was in Final Fantasy 11. Like you would have the, you'd bring out these summons for these really big hits. And then you would go about your day. So the, the changes overall have me excited. Now I've stated a couple of times, my plan is to play Reaper and, and Sage, uh, especially get them through the story. And then essentially, I think what this tells me from this reveal is that my next job that I hope to level up is Summoner. Like that's really what I want to do. We've got plans when it comes to that. Um, all the casters, I, I think fan, look fantastic. All the tanks look fantastic. I'm with you when it comes to healers. That is literally the first, like, okay, what does this mean? How is this going to feel? Uh, I'm not so, I'm not worried about White Mage at all. Astrologian's the big question mark. Scholar is the biggest concern. And Sage, I think, is probably going to be OP as all get out um, because it's in a new job being introduced. And then finally, when it comes to the melee jobs, like a Reaper, I think, is, is what stole the show for me in the theme. Um, and then the rest of them, like, I'm, I'm just not a melee guy. Monk actually looks really fun though i said that over Just and over monk again i was like monk good. actually i was like one of the things i've struggled with monk is like i don't understand what it's trying to be 
I don't think it knows what it's trying to be. But what I saw with what they presented was I was like, this looks like a unique job. You know, this actually looks different from everything else. And so I'm excited to see how that overall feels when I uh, when get to leveling it. Yep. Outside of the MSQ requiring that you delete a warrior job stone, my plan was to be a main warrior regardless of, of today, uh, next expansion. But I am definitely a warrior main. Paladin is the tank that feels the least natural to me, and it looks like it's the one that took the biggest set of changes. Um, so I'm really excited about the tanks. I'm interested in seeing what the healers become. Being a tank from 6.0 to 6.1 is going to be a negative queue time. I mean, I, yeah. it is it is literally all but like, hey, uh, let's get you to the front of the line. Let's get you straight into the duty. Like it, it is, it's going to be fast. Um, that's where I want to be. Oh, Yoshi P's so, calling? Yeah. He yeah, says I need yeah. to log in right now as a yeah, tank? Yeah. Okay, like we're we haven't personal duty, duty actually already commenced. Yeah. So if you wouldn't mind logging in, uh, so <laughs> you can it's... bypass the login queue to the game. <laughs> you're ready to rock and roll. So uh, I'm looking forward to the tanks, and uh, it's it's exciting when you pair this with the system adjustments in part two. I think there's a lot of really cool things coming this way, um, and it definitely feels like it's building on a lot of the feedback that players have have had. I'm sure there'll be new rounds of feedback. Uh, there's definitely going to be um, some areas there's some new drama waiting further into this yes uh, but the battle system doesn't feel like it's going to be the source of the drama uh, not so yet we'll see a we'll, great we'll part see. one we'll we'll have to go yeah well reddit will probably feed us plenty of topics to talk about this coming week so we'll have some fun with it regardless